Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. Okay, now this is the recorded for lecture two determiners, which is in Malay we call it as penentu. Okay. Okay, this is the lecture content. We will cover on topic one, two, and three, which is first is determinant of a metric, content of determinant, minor and cofactor, properties of determinant. Then the second topic will be the inverse of a metric. First is inverse of two times two metric, and second is inverse of three times three metric and higher. Okay, and for the third one, the topic is calculating an inverse of a matrix we it's contained by cofactor expansion and another one is by row reduction okay we will go one by one for this for those who can't understand what i'm teaching in the lecture yesterday you will please follow this lecture okay this recorded lecture okay now for first what is determinant? Determinant of a metric is special number that can be calculated from a square metric. Remember, a square metric is a metric with a square resolution, which is the example of square metric like uh, this. Okay. Okay, like this. One, two, three, four. Which is the value of the row is equal to the value of the column. This is the square metric, which is the two times two. Okay, this is the square metric. Other than that is like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. It is also the square metric, which is three times three, where the value of row is equal to the value of column. If we have a metric like this, four times four, it also a square metric. But if we have metric one, two, three. This is not a square metric because of the value of the row is three times one. Okay, this is not a square metric. Okay, what is it for? The determinant is commonly used to test if a metric is invertible and if it is invertible, then it will help us to find the inverse of a metric. Okay, other than that, it is also be used in calculus such as to find area of certain geometric figure. Okay, now the important thing here you have to know is the use of determinant to find the inverse of the metric. If the determinant is equal to zero, we know already that the inverse metric is not exist. Okay, why? We, we can find the answer throughout this lecture okay now the symbol of the determinant is vertical line which is if we have metric a then if the question asks what is the value of this symbol okay actually this asks you the value of determinant okay the determinant value of this Okay, this is the straight line. Okay, and if we have like this, okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, we know already that this symbol want us to find a determinant. Okay. And this is how we calculate the determinant for two times two metric. Okay, actually this is what you learn in SPM level previously. Okay, now we have this two times two metric. The determinant of A is, okay, this is the symbol of determinant and this is element of metric A, A, B, C, D. Then if you want to find a determinant, we have to calculate A, D minus B, C. Okay, then 
this is calculate the de determinant of this. Okay, now, okay, here the determinant of this metric is, okay, 4x negative 5, 4, which is 4 times 4, cross it. 4 times 4 times negative 5 times 8. Okay. Minus the, the, the symbol in between two is minus. Okay. Now the value is 56. Okay. Now this is how we calculate two times two metric. Then this is where we want to find the determinant of three times three metric. Okay. Like I said previously in the class, you may find a three times three metric by using all this row or you want, don't want to use that row. You may use this row also at uh, this column or you may use the last row which uh, if you determine to uh, use the last row, please use all the element of the last row to find a determinant. Either row or column you may use in order to find a determinant of 3 times 3 metric. Okay, now, for this example, this person use the first row. Which is now the, the the formula is okay. It's always have negative one. Negative one is always half in the formula, and this is one plus one, which is a a here at the place one row row number one column number one. That's why it is 1 plus 1 times A. And you have to close these two row and column because it's contain A. Now, we only focus on E times K minus F times H. Okay. Then we move to element number 2, which is B. Okay. Now, like previously, we only always put negative one, and for this number, it is one plus two because of the element B is in row number one and it is in the column number two. Then if we uh choose B, now we have to close. All element in a row contain B and in a column contain B. So that's why in here we focus on D times K minus F times G. Okay, now we have the last element in a row number one, which is C. Okay, here it's always contain negative one, and here one plus three because of. C is in a row number one, one here, and C in a column number three, three here. Okay, that's why it is one plus C, eh, one plus three. And it's time with C. Okay, now we have to close the row and column that involve C. Okay, this row and this column. Now we focus on the left element. D times H minus E times G. Okay, now I hope that you uh, master when you choose the first row, this is the formula. Actually, if you understand how to find a determinant, which row or which column that you use is going to be easier. And remember, you have to put element that you use here like this A, B, and C in a rumors. And other than that, you have to remember, you have always put negative in front. Then this is 1 plus 1 is the place of A, 1 plus 2 is the place of B, and 1 plus 3 is a place of C. And always put a plus symbol in front. Okay, that's the important thing. If you don't get what 
how to find the determinant by using the first row, you may rewind this recorded version. Okay, now this is the the figure illustration figure that it may help you. Why is it negative here? Because of negative time positive, it may get negative there. Okay, now let's move to the next slide. Okay, now we want to calculate the determinant of this. Okay, now. Okay, for this person, we found that it used the what row? Okay, this is still using the first row, which is uh, four here, and this is two, and this is six. Okay, now, this is while it using four, here is four times two, and five times negative seven. Okay, here. Okay, then when using the number two here, okay, it is negative two times two minus five times three here. Okay, and if for six, element six here, it is, um, we close this row and this column and it is negative two times negative seven and five times three. Okay, now, if we want to use the, what row? Just to, familiar ourselves if we want to use okay the first column here okay to calculate a determinant okay let's use the formula okay now let's do it together okay now we have first element is four and remember the in front just now okay this person assume that you already familiar with the negative in front just now but i if you are not really familiar just put negative one in front and this is four it is at place one plus one then times with four times two four times two it is eight minus five times seven it is negative 35 okay then plus okay always put negative you are not familiar always put negative then now the second element in a place row two uh, column one which is two plus one okay now when we use negative two here we have to close this row okay now we have here negative two outside the bracket then the element inside the bracket is two times two is four minus six times seven is negative 42 then here um okay now this is negative two Okay, always put bracket so that you may not be confused. Now the element number three. Okay, let padam yang ni dulu. Then put number three. Okay, this is three but first always put negative in front. Okay, it is negative one. Three is in a place of row three and it is in column one. Okay, times 3. Okay, no need to put bracket because it is positive. Okay, now here, inside the bracket, it is, okay, close this area. Then 2 times 5 is 10. 10 uh, minus 24. Okay, now. Am I doing right? Okay, let's check. Okay, now we have here, it is what? Negative 1 kuasa 2, it is positive and it is 4 times 8 plus 35. 35, 5 and 8. It is 43. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
it is negative one uh, power of three. It be negative one, right? So sebab tu negative positive we put negative here. Then we have negative two inside. Negative two, and it is four. Four plus forty two. It is forty six. Okay, it's time forty six, and negative one power of four here. It is plus because of it gone up, right? Okay, now three ten minus twenty four. It is negative. 14. Right? Okay, now we calculate this by using calculator. Where is my calculator? Okay. Okay, 4 times. Okay, calculator. Okay. 4 times 43, it is equal to 4 times 43. It is equal to 172. And this is minus minus. It is positive. Okay. Clear. 2 times 46 will be 92. And minus because of plus negative. Okay. It will be negative. 3. Okay. 3 times 14. We get 42. Okay, now the final answer will be Bismillah. I hope I not make a careless mistake here. Minus 42. Okay, Alhamdulillah. We get 2, 2, 2 by using the first column and see that whatever row, whatever uh column that you use the answer will be the same okay hope you can understand how to find the determinant okay then this is where we find a four times four metric actually when we already know the fundamental to find a determinant then if they want you to find six times six metric it's easier for you and it's like a loop like I said in the class yesterday which is here if you use uh, element A in a 4 times 4 metric you may close all the uh, row and column involved A and you have to find the determinant of this by using 3 times 3 it's like a, a nested loop there okay if you want to find B B is in a 1 plus 2. The, the formula is the same, which involve negative 1 at the front. Then you may find the nested determinant. Same goes to the third element C. Okay, find the nested determinant here. Also, do not forget to, to put negative 1 I plus J. And for D also, you may find the nested determinant while not forgetting the negative one i plus j day but that's why if you are already master how to find the determinant and if we get the biggest metric we have to embed the technology the technology there to assist you that's why in this course we introduce you to the matlab okay then, next slide is properties of determinant. If each of entry in a row or column is zero, then determinant is always zero. For example, like this. We have metric like this. Satu, dua, kosong, kosong. Uh, kosong, kosong. Okay, bila when you have one column is all value zero or you have one row, with all value zero, you may conclude that the determinant is equal to zero. No need to calculate. Okay, now if the row of column are identical, then 
A is equal to zero, which is when there is two column or row is identical like this, one, two, three, and element of second column is one, two, three also, but this is four, five, six. Because of this two column is same, so we can conclude that determinant of this metric is also equal to zero. Hmm, determinant dia sama dengan kosong. And the determinant of two matrices of n times n is the product of their determinant. Okay, what is this sentence mean? Meaning that if you have metric like this, A, A sama juga dengan Okay, A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and B is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5 and what does this sentence mean? Okay, meaning that A times kali-kali kan times B then you find a determinant of this multiplication of uh, of metric, it is equal to, if you calculate determinant of A, then you get the value and you time switch, calculate the determinant of B, you get the value and the value is equal. Mm. Okay. The determinant of a square metric and the determinant of its transpose are equal. Meaning that if you have A, A is 1, 2, 3, 4 and the transpose of A, transpose eh, transpose ialah kita tukar daripada row kepada baris. Okay, so kita tukar 1, 2, 3, 4. Tukar. Okay, so sekarang dekat situ daripada baris uh, from the row, we uh, transform it into column. And from the second row, we transform it into the column. And A, this is A transpose. And the value of this determinant of A and its transpose, A transpose is the same. Okay. Now, now you have this example. Let's uh, do this by using the properties just now. Okay. First, we notify that there is one row contains zero in all element. So, the situ we can calculate, we can um, conclude that this is determinant zero. And for the second metric, it's contain two row with the same value, which is the first row and the third row. So it is also determinant is equal to zero. And for S, S is uh, for number three and number four, we found that this row will be this column, this row will be this column, and this row same for this column. So we know that Y is equal to S transpose, meaning that the value of this determinant is equal to value of S determinant. Okay. What is the value of that? Okay. Like this. The answer is determinant E is equal to zero. Just now, determinant E is equal to zero and determinant S is equal to negative A. And if you want to find the transpose for S determinant is also equal to negative 8. You may use this as your exercise where you have this metric. Please uh, do this. Do you get negative 8 as a determinant? Okay, you may try this exercise. Okay, now we move to the next slide. 
which is the inverse of a matrix. Okay, we want to find an inverse of a matrix with 2 times 2 and 3 times 3 matrix. Okay, now we have this 2 times 2 matrix. Okay, this is what you learned previously. Okay, in order to get the inverse, we have to find the determinant 1 over determinant value and for the element of matrix A, we have to change it a bit, which is D replace with A and A replace with D and for the C and B put negative there. Okay, now this is the formula for 2 times 2 matrix. Okay, remember if we want to get a matrix with an inverse, remember the determinant above here is must be not equal to 0 because whatever number that divide by zero, it will get the infinite number. Okay, now we want to find the inverse of this. Okay, let's see. This is the determinant value. Okay, which is 4 times 4 minus negative 5 times 8. Okay, we get 56. Okay, now we know that this determinant is not equal to 0, so the inverse exists. Okay, how to find the inverse of this? Okay, this is the symbol of inverse matrix. Then, the, sim, uh, the, the inverse is 1 over determinant value, and this is where we have to switch the position okay because of the number is the same we can see the uh the changes okay four four and for this we have to multiply with negative and this we have to multiply with negative okay now we divide all the element with uh, determinant value. Okay, we get for the first element, 4 divided by 56, we get 1 over 14, and negative x divided by 56, we get negative 1 over 7, and 5 over 56, we get, uh, uh, we can't solve it, uh, we can't simplify it, so we remain as 5 over 56, and for the last one, 4 my, uh, divided by 56, we simplify it, we get 1 over 14. Okay, this is the value of inverse metric for this metric. Okay. Then here, this is inverse of 3 times 3 metric by using cofactor expansion. Okay, now. We have to remember first, determinant is not equal to zero. If the determinant is equal to zero, you have to stop the operation and conclude that the determinant is zero, so this metric don't have the inverse metric. Okay. So this is the formula for inverse metric by using a cofactor the expansion okay this is one over determinant times at jet at join a what is at join a okay this is at join a transpose of cofactor okay what is it let's do one by one okay first this is step by step to find inverse by using cofactor expansion it is calculate determinant a if determinant is equal, not equal to zero then proceed to step two otherwise stop a it is not invertible maksudnya there is no inverse at this now second Step is calculate cofactor of A. Cofactor of A and transpose cofactor to get adjoint of A. Okay, meaning that here, the adjoint, it is find the cofactor first. After you get cofactor, transpose the cofactor, you get the adjoint. Then, after we get the adjoint, lastly, we have to divide the adjoint matrix with the determinant A here. Ah, uh, Kita bahagikan dia. Okay, now. Uh, next step is, uh, okay, 
this is by using cofactor expansion other one uh, other than that we can find a, a inverse metric by using row reduction this is elementary row operation like i show to you in a first lecture for those who don't understand elementary row operation please uh, go to the first lecture or after this i will do it together with you okay then by using the core factor expansion how to calculate by using core factor expansion this is our metric okay first show that it does not exist okay show that it does not exist okay now here ah uh, uh, or show that it does not exist okay we find the determinant first okay now remember again the determinant okay this person using the first row okay one element number two is two and three and because of this it it is negative one power of three right so it's remain negative there and put number one two and three there we times the cross product inside the nested uh, metric left okay this is the determinant okay remember back the determinant how to calculate the determinant okay so we found that this is negative one so because of it is not equal to zero so the inverse exists okay now let's find the inverse okay after we get the determinant let's find the inverse okay first we have to find a cofactor of a okay just now the metric of a what wait then i i uh copy the metric first five three five six okay the metric is like this okay now this is the value of a metric okay it is uh, metric give me here lah one two three and two four five and three five six okay this is the metric and we want to find a cofactor of this metric okay now cofactor uh formula is this okay now let's find it together okay so for element number one number one here here okay it is negative one okay let's do by using pencil tool okay because it's more uh, save our space one is it is one plus one okay it is one plus one okay times with okay m i j m i j it is the value of this cofactor which is uh m i j 4 times 6 it is 24 minus 5 times 5 it is 25 okay now the value of this cofactor it is negative 1 power of 2 it is 1 okay it is negative 1 okay ah uh negative one and for the second value number two it is the cofactor value it is negative one power of one plus two and this is what okay m i j okay tutup yang ni dan yang ini so dua kali enam dua belas minus dengan lima kali tiga lima belas okay now Yang ini dia akan jadi dengan negatif satu remain negatif satu because it is power of three ganjil kan so negatif satu kali dengan dua belas tolak lima belas it is negatif negatif three okay so this value it is three okay now for the third element 
Okay, for this element, it is negative 1 power of 1 plus 3 and for M, I, J, tutup ni, tutup yang ni. So, 2, 5, 10 minus 12. Okay, 4 times 3, right? Okay, it is equal to uh, negative 2. Okay, same goes to the element Yang keempat, which is 2, 2 there is in the position of 2 plus 1. And MIJ, it is, we have to close this column and this column. So, 2 times 6, you see, it is 12 minus 2 times 6. And here is 3 times 5 minus 15. If I'm doing wrong, please correct me. Okay, tell me in the tutorial later. Okay, so it is negative 1 times here is 12 minus 15 is negative. Wait, wait. This 2, 2 kali 6, 12, 3 kali 5, 2, 15. Okay, betul. Okay, so negative 3. Okay, so it is equal to? Three. Okay, for the fifth element, you may find this, 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 and this, also this cofactor. Okay, so the value of cofactor is, okay, um, okay, so you may follow this uh, slide, you may find that the first element is one just now, this one, negative one. The second element is three here. And the fourth element is negative two. And the fifth element, uh, fourth element, uh, just now is third element. And here is three. And the fifth is negative three. And this is the value of cofactor element is one. And this is negative two. The place three, two is... Uh, here is 1 and this is 0. Okay, now you get the cofactor metric. This is in the uh, circle. The red circle is the cofactor element. Okay, now this cofactor metric, you not get the inverse yet. After you get the cofactor of A, okay, this is the cofactor that you, you found just now. Yang ni, yang merah-merah ni kan. Okay, kita tulis dia dalam bentuk metric. Like this. Okay, this is cofactor. Just just now we want to find adjoint kan to get an inverse. So the the adjoint matrix is actually transpose this matrix, which is the transpose. Remember, we we change from the row here to the column and the second row to the second column, the third row to the third column. Okay, now we found the adjective. At, at join A. At join A, after we get the at join of A, we want to find the inverse. It is equal to at join of A and we have to times with 1 over determinant of a. Just now, at the first place, we already calculate the determinant of A. Just now, it is equal to negative 1, right? So, that's why here, we get the, okay, from the adjoint here, adjoint here, we times with the 1 over determinant. Okay, the determinant is negative 1 just now. This is the adjoint metric. Yang atas ni, and we divide each element with negative 1, we get this metric. Okay, this the final answer for the inverse metric by using the cofactor expansion. Okay, remember the step just now? Cari determinant first. Okay, must always remember the determinant is not equal to zero. Lepas dapat determinant yang kedua, find the cofactor matrix. The cofactor matrix. Okay, ingat the rumus of cofactor ialah negative 1, 1 pl uh, I plus, this is I plus J and this is M I 
J and the third one from the cofactor cofactor of A you transpose it you transpose it you get adjoint adjoint A after we get the adjoint A we may find the fourth one is A inverse inverse of A is equal to adjoint A bahagi dengan determinant A. Okay, this is the step by step to find the inverse A by using the cofactor expansion. Okay, now move to the example 5 which is Example 5 here, we want to find the inverse of A. First, we have to find a determinant. Okay, because of the determinant of A here, it is equal to 0. So, we may not proceed to the next step because we already know from the properties if it is equal to 0, so the inverse does not exist. So, stop the calculation. Okay. Then, here we calculate an inverse metric by using row reduction. Okay, now, in order to get the inverse metric to... Uh, the inverse metric by using the row reduction uh, process... First is you have to find the determinant, but because of this metric, we already know the determinant just now is negative 1, so we may proceed to the next step. Okay, first we have to put our metric here. This is the metric from the example. We put it in a left side and the right side put the identity metric what is identity metric it is diagonal one other element is zero after we put it like this we may use the row reduction okay remember again okay row reduction okay now we want to make this metric in term of 1, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0. We want to change it into this. And the right side will be our inverse metric. Okay, let move, let go for the first step. Okay, now, okay, it's depend on us whether you want to change 2 to be 0 or 3 to be 0. Okay, for this person, it, it um, begin with to change this the three to be zero. Okay, in order to get three to be zero, untuk dapatkan tiga ni jadi kosong, mestilah buat tiga tolak tiga. Three minus three, right? Okay, now use your first identity element one here. One here is in row number one, and times it with negative 3 because we want to make 3 to be 0. Jadi, 3 tolak 3. So, the tolak 3 put in front. Jadi, negative 3 darab R1 always prefer to R1 because dekat sini atas dia ialah the perpenjuru 1, the diagonal 1 is 1. Okay. Negative 3 times R1 plus Okay, now it always R3 because negative 3, R1 is 1, negative 3 times 1 plus 3. Okay, it will be equal to 0 here. Okay, we get the first 0. And remember, if only R3, you want to change it, you may... Just copy the first and the second row. No need to change it yet. Okay, now the second second element of row 3 here is 5, right? So, do this, uh, do follow the operation, which is negative 3 times R1 for 5 is 2. 
Ya, yeah. jadi negatif 3, negatif 3 uh, times 2 is negatif 6 plus 5. Ya, yeah. so that's why it is negatif 1 here. Now the third element is 6. Just use this formula. Negative 3 times R1 is 3 which is negative 9. We get negative 9 now. Negative 3 times R1 for 6 is 3. So negative 9 plus R3 plus 6 which is negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3. Okay, do it for all element in the third row. Okay, now the element yang keempat here. Negative 3 times the first element of uh, the of 0 here is negative 3 times R1 is 1, which is negative 3 plus 0. So that's why it is negative 3. Okay, for the second element, uh, for the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 element here, fifth element here, okay, because of negative 3 times R1 is 0 here, so 0 plus 0, so that's why it is 0. Then same goes to the last element here, 1. Negative 3 times R1 here is 0, which is 0 plus 1, it is, also, it, it is equal to 1. Okay, now complete this. Okay, now you have the 2 here. Make it 0. Okay, now we have to change all the R2 element. But for the R3 element here and for the R1 element here, please copy it. Then here. Just copy the element number 1 and number 2. Copy it first. And here, look at here. We want to make it 0. Okay, so we know the element of 2. Okay, this is 2. How to get 2? We have to put negative 2 in front, right? So that's why the element, it is negative 2 in front. But look at your diagonal number is 1, right? From the row number 1. That's why this is R1. Okay, plus the just now is from the R2, right? So, this is R2 and we want to change all element of R2. Here, R2 for the first element, we found it as 0. Okay, we get 0 now. Don't forget to change all the R2 element to the new element. Okay, now, follow this formula. Okay, let's do for the second element of R2, which is 4. Okay, so now, negative 2 times R1. R1 here is 2. Uh, so, yang pertama, di atas 4, R1, which is above 4, is 2. That's why negative 2 times 2 is 4 minus uh, plus Four, we get zero here. Uh, then for the third element, okay, negative two times three is six. Six, okay, plus R2. R2 is five. Okay, that's why we get, this is negative six. Okay, negative two times three is negative six. And we get negative 1 here. Okay, don't forget all element in a row 2. Okay, now we have to do it in this element also. Okay, just follow the formula. The formula is negative 2 times R1. R1 here is 1. So, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And plus R2 here is, R2 here is 0. Okay, we get negative 2. And the fifth element uh, here, we have to change it, but it's no 
changes found because of negative 2 times R1 dekat sini is 0. So, bila bahag kali dengan kosong, we'll get 0 kan? Then, plus 1, we it's still 1 here and for the last element, when any number negative 2 times 0 plus 0, we also get 0 here. So, we already get this element 0. Now, you can see that, okay, the second diagonal for penjuru yang kedua ni kosong. Kita tak nak kosong. We want it to be 1. So, that's why we change this row to this row. Okay. The next process is we change the row. Ha. R2 tukar dengan R3. Okay, bila R2 tukar dengan R3, you can see here. This row tukar dengan row yang ketiga. So, kita dapat row yang baru kat sini. Okay, nampak tak? Semua ni semua kita bawa ke row yang kedua. We move it to the second row. And semua yang second row ni semua kita letak dekat row yang terakhir. Okay, now. Here. To get this negative 1 to be 1 as a diagonal 1, 1, right? And... Kebetulan ini juga negative 1. So, kita boleh buat dua proses serentak which is row number 2 kita kali dengan negative and row number 3 we times it with the negative also. We found this new metric which is the diagonal number is already 1. Okay, now. It depend on you whether you want to change this to be 0 or this to be 0 or this to be the zero. So, we have next uh, the three operasi lagi. Okay, so teruskan. Okay, macam orang ni, dia tukar yang ini, yang ini. So, yang kedua to be zero. Okay, this is the formula. To get three zero, nombor tiga ni untuk jadikan dia kosong, kita kena tolak dengan tiga betul. So, that's why it is negative three. But, the diagonal number for the three, whether you have to look above or you have to look below. Okay, tengok dekat atas atau bawah. Atas ni bukan unsur diagonal. So, we may use one. Okay, one here is from the row number three. That's why this formula is R3. And plus by it row, row number two. So, we change row number two. All the number two row will be change after you put all this element by using this formula then you may get the new R2. Okay, buat eh. Boleh buat satu-satu tengok macam mana. And then The, the R1. Okay, they want to change the R1 here. Okay, they want to change here. Okay, to be zero. Okay, then kita tahu dua tolak dua. That's why this is tolak dua and the element of penjuru here, the diagonal is one in a row two and put R2 and plus the row one because two in a row one and we change row one. And row two and row three just copy it. Then Involve all the element for row 1 by using this formula and calculate it, we can get the new element of row 1. Okay, this is the new element of row 1. Boleh buat eh? Okay, same process by using the formula that you found just now. And we only have this element to be 0. Okay, now this is 3. And we know that negative 3 plus 3 and this negative 3, how to get it to be negative 3, we have to find the diagonal number. Perpenjuru dia dekat bawah which is R3. We want to tambah dengan 3 to get 0. But 3 ni dekat row yang ke pertama. So sebab itu kita ubah row yang pertama to get Changes for row number one to get this number zero. Okay, now follow the process. Okay. Nampak tak? The 
formula given like I show you just now. Okay, it get one, zero, three. Okay, so we found this element, the blue one, and do it by using this formula, then it may change to this element. Okay, now we successfully get this A just now, metric A tu dah jadi diagonal metric, dah jadi identity metric. Now, we already found the inverse of A. Ha, ni. Inverse of A ialah metric yang di sebelah kanan yang kita dapat tadi tu. Okay, so this is the inverse of A by using row operation. Okay, now this is the row operation and uh, we simply conclude that this is the inverse metric for A. Uh, okay, that's the process. Okay, now if this question find the inverse of metric or show that it does not exist first you have to find okay so sekarang kita tahu bahawa bila kita when you found that this metric when you do a row operation you get this which is the third element we can get one here tak boleh letak satu it is zero. Macam mana kita nak wujudkan satu? Kita tak boleh tambah dengan satu, betul tak? When we tambah satu, kita kena tambah satu, satu throughout the element in a row three. So, we may conclude that it is the row of zero on the left mean we cannot get the identity metric and thus A is not invertible. Ha, A tu tidak dapat nak cari dia punya inverse. Okay. So, next is linear equation. Okay, for those who uh, feel that it's quite tough to know the determinant, to know, to, to, to master how to find inverse metric using cofactor and row de reduction, you may see this recorded or rewind this recorded again or if still cannot understand, please ask for your friends help or you may ask me okay thank you assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera